Now we're moving into the heart of TOGAF, the Architecture Development Method, or ADM. If enterprise architecture is the blueprint, the ADM is the step-by-step -step construction guide that tells you how to build that blueprint. The ADM is the core of the TOGAF framework. It's a tested and repeatable process for developing architectures. What makes it special is that it's iterative, which means it's not just a linear process that you follow once from start to finish. Instead, it's a continuous cycle of architecture definition and realization. Think of it like GPS navigation for your architecture journey. It helps you identify where you are now, your baseline architecture, where you want to go, your target architecture, and then guides you on how to get there with the ability to recalculate if you encounter unexpected obstacles or if conditions change. The ADM consists of several phases that form this continuous cycle. Let me walk you through them briefly, and we'll dive deeper into each one in the coming slides. It all starts with the preliminary phase, where you prepare the organization for architecture development. This includes customizing the TOGAF framework to your specific needs and defining your architecture principles. Then there's requirements management, which isn't really a phase, but an ongoing process throughout the ADM. It's like the fuel that keeps the ADM running, managing architecture requirements as they evolve. Phase A is architecture vision, where you define the scope of your architecture initiative, identify stakeholders, create the architecture vision, and get approval to proceed. This is the starting point for all architecture development. Phase B is business architecture, where you develop the target business architecture. Phase C covers information systems architectures, which includes both data and application architectures. Phase D is technology architecture, where you develop the technology architecture. Phase E is Opportunities and Solutions, where you identify delivery vehicles, projects, programs, for the target architecture and start implementation planning. Phase F is Migration Planning, where you finalize a detailed implementation and migration plan. Phase G is Implementation Governance, which provides architectural oversight for implementation projects. Finally, Phase H is architecture change management, where you establish procedures for managing changes to the new architecture. Remember, this is a cycle, not a straight line. You can and often do revisit phases as needed throughout the architecture development process. Let's dive deeper into phase A, architecture vision. This phase is crucial because it sets the direction for everything that follows. It's like deciding on the destination before you start a journey. If you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. The purpose of Phase A is to define the initial scope of the architecture initiative, identify stakeholders, create the architecture vision, and obtain approval to proceed. This phase answers the fundamental question, what are we trying to achieve? Key activities in this phase include establishing the architecture project, confirming constraints and requirements, developing the architecture vision, and getting stakeholder buy-in. The outputs of this phase include the Statement of Architecture Work, which acts as a contract between the architecting organization and the sponsor, and the Architecture Vision Document, which provides a high-level summary of the desired future state and business value. Think of Phase A as the elevator pitch for your architecture work. It needs to be compelling enough to get approval to proceed, but comprehensive enough to set clear boundaries and expectations. Now let's look at Phases B, C, and D together, as they all focus on developing the target architecture across different domains. Phase B is all about business architecture. This is where you develop the target business architecture based on the architecture vision. Business architecture focuses on the business strategy, governance, organization, and key business processes. It answers the question, what does the business need to do to achieve its goals? Phase C covers information systems architectures, which includes both data and application architectures. 
Data architecture describes the structure of an organization's logical and physical data assets, while application architecture provides a blueprint for individual application systems, their interactions, and their relationships to the core business processes. This phase answers, what information and applications do we need to support the business? Phase D is technology architecture, where you develop the technology architecture that supports the information systems architectures. This includes the hardware, software, and network infrastructure needed to support the applications and data. It answers, what technology do we need to make it all work? These three phases together create a comprehensive target architecture that addresses business, information, and technology aspects of the organization. Now that we've defined our target architecture, we need to figure out how to actually implement it. That's where phases E, F, G, and H come in. Phase E is opportunities and solutions. This is where you identify delivery vehicles, projects, programs for the target architecture and start implementation planning. You're essentially figuring out how to break down the big architecture vision into manageable pieces that can be implemented. Phase F is migration planning. Here, you finalize a detailed implementation and migration plan that outlines how to move from the baseline architecture to the target architecture. This includes identifying dependencies between projects, estimating costs and benefits, and creating a realistic timeline. Phase G is architectural governance. Once implementation begins, you need to ensure that the projects are adhering to the architecture. This phase provides architectural oversight for implementation projects, ensuring that they're delivering what was intended. Finally, Phase H is architecture change management. Even the best laid plans need to adapt to changing circumstances. This phase establishes procedures for managing changes to the new architecture, ensuring that it remains relevant and effective over time. These phases are all about turning vision into reality, taking the architectural designs and making them happen in the real world. The ADM provides a structured process, but TOGAF also offers various techniques to support you in applying the ADM effectively. Let's look at some of the key techniques. First, stakeholder management. This is about winning support from others and identifying key players early in the process. It's crucial because architecture affects many parts of an organization and you need buy-in from the right people to succeed. Next, gap analysis. This is a final step in each phase to highlight shortfalls between the baseline architecture and the target architecture. It's like drawing a line between where you are and where you want to be, then identifying what needs to be done to bridge that gap. Migration planning techniques include several tools to help you plan the transition from baseline to target architecture. These include the Implementation Factor Catalog, Consolidated Gaps, Solutions, and Dependencies Matrix, Architecture Definition Increments Table, Transition Architecture State Evolution Table, and Business Value Assessment Matrix. These might sound complex, but they're essentially just structured ways to think about and plan your migration. Risk management is another important technique. Implementing architecture projects involves risks, and this technique helps you mitigate those risks. It's about identifying potential problems before they happen and having plans to address them. Finally, architecture alternatives and trade-offs. Rarely is there only one way to achieve your architectural goals. This technique helps you identify alternative target architectures and build understanding of different possibilities and identify trade-offs between them. These techniques provide practical methods to support architects throughout the ADM cycle, helping to address specific challenges and ensure successful architecture outcomes. Let's recap what we've learned about the ADM. The architecture development method is the core of TOGAF. It's a tested and repeatable process for developing architectures. It's iterative, not linear, which means it's a continuous cycle of architecture definition and realization. The ADM includes several phases, preliminary phase, requirements management, ongoing, 
and then phases A through H, each with specific purposes and outputs. Phase A defines the architecture vision. Phases B through D develop the target architecture across business, information systems, and technology domains. And phases E through H focus on implementation and governance. TOGAF also provides various techniques to support the ADM, including stakeholder management, gap analysis techniques, migration planning techniques, risk management, and architectural alternatives and trade-offs. The ADM is designed to be adaptable. It can be tailored to suit specific organizational needs while still providing a structured approach to architecture development. This balance between structure and flexibility is one of the reasons TOGAF is so widely adopted. Thank you for watching this video. In next video, we will cover business architecture.